when you have a mask on your face over your eyes and your, your mouth, you can't understand what people are saying and you have to move them around. And I found myself a lot of the time removing the mask, breathing in the hydrogen sulfide, but also speaking to people more clearer to get them to move. And, and after the first day, this, this, this took its toll. I got a, quite a serious sore throat. So uh, from then onwards, I, I used a respirator. Um, deep inside the cave, we were, we were taking pictures of bats flying out of one of the passages. And we had to react quite quickly because of the bats were only going to hang around for so long before they, they, they bolted off somewhere else to roost. And after about, I don't know, a minute or two minutes, we were both, myself and my assistant, were getting really hot and sweaty and feeling quite faint. Um, and Matt looked at his, 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 his monitor the, the gas detector and he was reading high, very high levels of carbon monoxide which we didn't even know existed in the cave and of course our respirators only filtered out hydrogen sulfide so it was allowing carbon monoxide to get through into us, our noses and, and that's what we were breathing in, quite strong amounts of carbon monoxide. Inside Cueva de Villa Luz, there are lots of pools of water where many, many fish, hundreds of fish live. And um, when you approach these pools, you turn with your head torch on your helmet and you can see all the fish run away. They sort of scarper and disappear to the bottom of the pool to avoid the light. So photographing these fish was quite difficult because when you're setting everything up, the fish weren't there. They were all, always at the bottom of the pool. So we had to get all the lights set up and then turn everything off and wait for like two minutes, two or three minutes in total darkness, allowing the fish to come back to the surface and then we would set the flashes off. In order to, uh, to take a picture looking directly down onto the river that was milky blue, we had to wait for really good weather. Most evenings, there would be a, a storm that would pass through the area, uh, wash through the cave and turn the water brown effectively. So coordinating some kind of aerial photography was quite difficult because we, wouldn't, we weren't sure if we were guaranteed that beautiful milky blue water. So we asked a few local people who lived close by if we could have their telephone numbers and we were going to call them that morning to check that the weather was good and it hadn't stormed the night before. And then we knew that it was good to take the aerial photography. I used the same clothes uh, inside the cave all the time. I didn't, I didn't change. We had one pair of shorts and a t-shirt and my boots. And even now, after about four or five washes in the washing machine, I'm still smelling hydrogen sulfide. <laughs> 